Okay, our next presentation it will be given by um, Sung Won uh, Jung. He's a professor from University of Bristol, uh, UK. He flew all the way from UK to attend this summit and give uh, uh, his talk. So his talk will be Blockchain and Crypto Economics. Sung Won. Yeah, so, yeah, actually, I, I, oh, is this working? Yeah. yeah, maybe I can just use it, yeah. So, yeah, initially I was invited to uh, KAIST, so, and, yeah, fortunately there is a, on this event, so, yeah. So that, that's why, uh, that's how I can also present uh, uh, today, yeah. So today I'm going to, I'm going to talk about blockchain and crypto economics. So I think many people uh, talk about crypto economics uh, these days. But, uh, is this? Oh, okay. So let me, let me introduce uh, myself a little bit. So I'm in the uh, econ department, uh, but I was an uh, engineering student uh, before. So I studied uh, several things, the electrical engineering and computer science and mathematics. And I was also I, I also have a, a past uh, industry experience. Uh, before joining Bristol, I I worked at Facebook as a new faculty fellow economist. So I uh, there I uh, mainly work on online advertising auction, and and I filed I filed uh, two uh, U.S. Uh, patent, and at AOL uh, I also did some. Uh, research on online advertising. And instead of military in Korea, yeah, I worked at Unlet. And at that time, fortunately, the, that time, uh, the crypto uh, public key infrastructure was uh, introduced in Korea. So I was very uh, shocked by the system. And yeah, eventually, the PKI is uh, adopted in cryptocurrency. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it seems. Uh, Today, though, everybody uh, seems to have something to sell or advertise. <laughs> and actually, I, I don't have anything to sell or advertise. But uh, yeah, actually, I, I have something. So um, uh, though I, I'm actually doing some YouTube on, online uh, video lecture on uh, blockchain technology. So, uh, so based on this. Uh, background, uh, naturally, I, I came to have inter uh, interest in blockchain technology, but unfortunately, the, in Korea, uh, most people uh, were more interested in investing or speculating, uh, not in uh, technology itself. So I, I thought uh, it might be very important to uh, uh, deliver uh, the objective uh, 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 deliver the uh, blockchain uh, technology uh, objecti objectively, and that's why I started this uh, YouTube lecture. So uh, please, please wa watch it and, and subscribe it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I also <laughs> make, make some, some cartoon, yeah, and this uh, blockchain, so <laughs> each block has a name, and I will, I will show uh, some of them, yeah, today. So here is a... Uh, uh, Content. So, what is crypto economics, and and basically crypto economics and crypt cryptography and economics. So, I will first introduce uh, public key cri cryptography, and then talk about consensus mechanism, and uh, what kind of research is uh, going on in economics. Yeah. So, what is uh, crypto economics? Yeah, to be honest, uh, yeah, crypto economics uh, isn't a uh, field name in economics uh, yet. Yeah, at least. Yeah, so it's, uh, to be honest, it's, I, I think it's more like the marketing term, <laughs> or the, the first usage is more like marketing term because the many people don't like uh, the word of cryptocurrency or uh, virtual currency, but. If, if we are using crypto economy, then it sounds yeah, cool. Or, yeah, so I think that's the main reason why that crypto economy, uh, that word is um, more popular these days. And the second use is, uh, of course, is, 
is actually uh, widely used in our uh, engineering field. And uh, as you know, the Vitalik Buterin, uh, he defines uh, crypto economics uh, like this. So first, it uses uh, cryptography uh, to prove something that happened in the past. And the second part is uh, to give uh, economic incentive uh, to, to make uh, this system uh, sustainable uh, in the future. And Vlad Jampir, he's, he's also in uh, Ethereum Foundation. And uh, he defines it uh, more formally. And the main idea is a, is a practical science. So as I mentioned, the crypto economics is a cryptography uh, plus economics. And yeah, of course, the crypto economy, uh, uh, cryptography is a field of the, the engineering. Yeah, so CS or E or mathematics. And for economics, it's mainly about uh, game theory or me mechanism design and network or governance. So let me briefly explain our public key cryptography. So in, in the past, the, we used the symmetric or single key cryptography. This is the cryptography system uh, we are using on a daily basis. Like uh, when we uh, encrypt word file, then we use the same password uh, to encrypt it. And, and also when, when we open the file, we use the same password. Then the problem is uh, there should be a way to uh, or pass this key or securely. So let's say I, I want to send a secured uh, email to somebody, then there should be a way to send this password uh, securely. Yeah, that, that's a problem. So in, in public key uh, cryptography system, now there are two keys. The one is public key and the other is private key. And public key, as, as the name suggests, it can be distributed uh, in public. So it's safe to let other people know your public key. And you can think the Bitcoin address is kind of public key. And the private key, uh, it should be kept uh, secretly uh, to, to you. Yeah. And then public keys uh, can be calculated though, immediately uh, from private keys. So when you use uh, wallet software, then what you need to uh, provide is a private key. Then they, they immediately, immediately calculate uh, your public key, which is uh, address, yeah, from, from them. However, the doing private key from uh, public keys are uh, almost impossible. Yeah, so we, we just assume, assume that the cryptographic algorithm is secure uh, in, in this way. So. And how to use uh, this PKI, the public key infrastructure system? It's, roughly speaking, it's uh, encrypt with uh, one key, then decrypt with the other. So there are two main usages uh, of public key uh, cryptography. So the first one is encryption. In this case, uh, encrypt with public key, and then decrypt with uh, private key. So let's say I want to send an uh, encrypt message to my friend. Then uh, again, the public key is known to everybody, or, or I can ask, uh, be, what is your, your, uh, uh, your public key? Then I, was, I, I send a message which is encrypted uh, by uh, B's public key. Then B receives the message, and then uh, B decrypt uh, this message with its own private key. So only B can decrypt it. So this is the first usage. And the second one is a uh, digital signature. And this one is, is the opposite. So encrypt with the private key and decrypt with public key. So let's say I want to prove that the message came from uh, me. Then what I need to do is I sign the message with my own pri private key. Then anyone who knows my uh, public key can uh, verify the message. The Bitcoin uh, for example, Bitcoin uses the elliptic curve or uh, digital signature algorithm. Yeah. So it's like when I, when I send, send a Bitcoin to uh, B, then what I need to do is, uh, what, what, what I need to do is I, I should know uh, B's Bitcoin address, which is a uh, public key. Yeah. And how, how to prove uh, I, I own that Bitcoin is 
is done by this digital signature. Okay. Uh, may, may, oh, sorry. Maybe, maybe you are not uh, uh, convinced why this uh, public key uh, system uh, is so good. Then let me give you this example. So, how many keys are needed uh, for a thousand people? Or secure communication. If we are using a symmetric key, then because we need the key uh, for each pair, so we need the thousand combination two keys. Yeah. So it's a uh, half million keys, and each person needs to memorize yeah, uh, 999 keys. Yeah, it's too many. So if we don't have uh, some software, then we tend to use the same password uh, for uh, uh, other people, so yeah, then uh, it cannot be secure. Yeah, but if we are using public key, then we only need to have uh, two thousand total keys, and and interestingly, each person only needs to uh, memorize just one key. Yeah, public key is just public key, so you don't need to memorize it, and. All you need to know is just your uh, private key. So, so I think now you, you realize that uh, we, need, uh, we need to use a public key for this purpose only, yeah. Okay, then let me talk about uh, consensus mechanism. Yeah. The problems in our P2P system are is uh, double spending and uh, Byzantine generous problem. Yeah. So double spending is based uh, because there is no uh, central authority, and uh, in P2P system each node is equivalent. So there is no way to determine uh, which transaction is actually uh, the first transaction. And Byzantine general problems is basically uh, we want to build a reliable system uh, from unreliable parts. Yeah, that's what we want to do. So the consensus mechanism in blockchain is this. So a mechanism that has a nice uh, Byzantine fault tolerance properties and reaches a consensus on the validity of uh, the sequence of transactions, uh, which means uh, no double spending. So as you know, there are uh, several, several uh, widely used uh, consensus mechanisms the proof of work and proof of stake and uh, delegated uh, proof of stake. Uh, yeah, the first one is the proof of work. Yeah. So as you know, the, the main problem of proof of work uh, is now individual cannot uh, do mining by proof, proof of work in Bitcoin. Yeah. So this is actually the picture from uh, Bitmain. The, which is one of the largest uh, mining mining farm mining company, so it's a it's a huge huge mining farm and it consumes uh, a lot of energies. So one of the uh, main spread of uh, Bitcoin or cryptocurrency was uh, decentralization, but actually now it's uh, becoming uh, centralized. Yeah. So in the past, there there was a moment that even uh, hash power of one one mining pool uh, was more than 50%. But now they uh, try to move to another mining pool uh, to uh, de decentralize it. But as you can see, but still, if, if we combine just three uh, largest mining pool, their, their hash power is more than 51%. And you may think if you have a supercomputer, then maybe you can get a lot of uh, Bitcoin from mining. But actually, it is not. So it's very surprising. Even in 2013, uh, Bitcoin network uh, computing power uh, surpassed the world's top 500 uh, supercomputers uh, computing power uh, by uh, 25, uh, 20 or 56 times. So, in some sense, we are wasting a lot of co computing power. And in 2016, yeah, Bitcoin network uh, surpassed the one 
exa has hash array. In 2017, the world's fast, fastest supercomputer is like the 7.3 or tera hash, but Bitcoin network is a 10 exa hash. Even if we we assume this is a ten, around 10, it's a million times faster. Yeah. Okay. And how much energy uh, is uh, spent spent by our uh, Bitcoin network? For instance, uh, they use more energy than even one country. Yeah. They use more more energy than uh, Czech Czech uh, Republic. And Korea is between uh, Canada and Germany. K Korea is uh, similar to Canada and Germany, so they are wasting a lot of energies. Yeah. Okay. And that, so now let me uh, talk about uh, proof of stake. Proof, proof of stake is uh, the block producer is basically determined by the stakes in that coin. Yeah. And they usually use us. Uh, some kind of weighting, uh, like coin age. So there are several uh, cryptocurrencies uh, that uses uh, POS. And Ethereum is uh, currently mainly based on uh, proof of work, but they are trying to move to uh, POS uh, using uh, Casper protocol. So main advantages of uh, POS is uh, they, they are fast and efficient. Oh, actually, this is old old slide. Interesting. Yeah, but okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. The, the another uh, advantage is advantage is is a uh, is a uh, safe from a uh, fifty one percent attack. And there are but there are several problems. So the first thing is the nothing at, at stake. The problem is this. So basically. Uh, this this means uh, you you are saying that the block producer say, saying that uh, both both blocks are valid, yeah, and then eventually one of them should be valid, so they will receive uh, the reward eventually. So they they don't have anything to lose, yeah. So this is the problem of nothing at stake. So to resolve this problem, uh, for instance, uh, Casper protocol. Uh, introduce some penalty. So, if let's say uh, eventually the the block that you claim this is uh, valid uh, turns out turns out to be false, then you lose some some money. So that way they are trying to solve this problem. But the problem is it's very hard to uh, implement the good uh, POS system uh, without without problems. So. Yeah, that's one problem. And the, 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 the other problem is, although they are uh, safe from 51% uh, uh, attack, but they might be uh, centralized by, by stakes. Yeah. So the third one is uh, witness, uh, the, the depots. So depots is basically the witnesses or block producers are determined by uh, Voting, and this voting is usually weighted by uh, their stakes. So, bit shares and Steemit and EOS uh, uses uh, these depots, and BitShare and BitShare and Steemit uh, use the term witness, but it's a kind of confusing. So, EOS uh, uses a block producer, uh, which is more much more uh, clear. Yeah. So there are many advantages, though it has uh, the same advantages of uh, POS system, and plus uh, it might be uh, more democratic. Yeah. And actually it's uh, much easier to implement than POS, or of course good POS system. And the problem is it has the same problems as in the reality. So witnesses witness or block producers, they may uh, collude. Or the people usually don't have interest in uh, voting. For example, yeah, I, I'm using Steemit uh, to upload my uh, lecture note, but 
actually many Steam it user, they, they don't even know that there is a voting for witnesses. Yeah. And even if they know, uh, they don't have uh, so much interest in actual voting. Yeah. So let me talk about incentive comparability of consensus mechanism. And by the way, incentive comparability basically means that you cannot be better off uh, by uh, by lying, yeah. So it's also good for you to behave uh, honestly, yeah. But actually, 51% attack is possible. So if, uh, as you know, the in, in blockchain, the uh, corrected chain is the longest chain. So if you have, uh, for, for example, in uh, proof of work, if you have more than 50% uh, uh, computing power, then you can create it, uh, you can create a uh, longest chain, so you can uh, do a uh, double spending attack. So for, for example, Bitcoin uh, consensus mechanism is not uh, incentive comparable, but they seem uh, working well. Uh, why? It is based on uh, this argument. The more computing power means, the more co coins uh, they already have or will have uh, from mining uh, properly. So they, basically, they don't have incentive uh, to do attack. Because if they are trying to do this kind of 51% attack, then because blockchain is uh, publicly uh, observable, so they know that uh, the Bitcoin network uh, is uh, receiving attack. So Bitcoin prices uh, will plunge. So they don't have uh, incentive to do that. Okay. So this idea uh, actually applies to other uh, consensus mechanisms. So it, seem, it seems uh, working well, at least for Bitcoin. But interestingly, this year, uh, this 51% uh, attack actually happened in other uh, cryptocurrencies. Like for, for example, uh, this May, the, the last month, the Bitcoin gold uh, was actually attacked. And this verge, actually, there was uh, three attacks yeah, during the past three months. And just a few days ago, Gencash uh, was hacked. And the solution of the 51% attack is actually uh, simple. The practical solution is just uh, more, confirmation, more confirmations. Yeah, so you need to wait more. So actually, I, yeah, I don't trade uh, anymore. I actually, I didn't trade that much uh, in, even in the past. But uh, after uh, starting <laughs> online lecture, so I, I want to be objective. So I don't trade uh, at all now. And, but I, I went to uh, Bitthumb and they actually uh, posted an uh, announcement that they increased the number of confirmation that needed uh, for certain uh, cryptocurrencies. Okay, and let me briefly uh, introduce uh, what kind of research is going on in economics. Yeah, of course, basically, uh, cryptocurrencies is more are more widely being researched in uh, econ CS field, not pure econ. Yeah, and but one thing very one thing uh, very surprised me was uh, actually this this uh, EC conference is actually they are growing very fast even among eco economists, and actually they invited uh, this year uh, Vitalik Buterin yeah, for one plenary talk. So. Of course, uh, I, I still believe that uh, more CS people are interested in, in this, but it's a, a very uh, prestigious uh, conference, so I think now even economists will have uh, much more interest in uh, this area. Yeah. And, and this one, the, this paper is about um, miners may have interested uh, in not passing the transaction to another node. Yeah, this is about, about that. 
And this paper is about a double spending attack for fast payment. So basically, main message is we need to wait more confirmation and, yeah, and, and such a thing. So, and for example, this one, another, another interesting attack is uh, something called uh, selfish mining, which is even if you already find, uh, find a mine, mine a block, valid block, uh, you just postpone uh, announcing it. You just keep it secretly and then start uh, mining another block immediately. And then uh, even if uh, the, other, the other guys uh, pronounce uh, the block, then there is a, a huge chance that you have um, more than one block, like two, two blocks. Uh, this is called uh, selfish mining. And by doing this, you actually don't need a uh, more than 50% power. Just 25% uh, hash, hash power is enough. So actually it's more vulnerable. Uh, and one thing I forgot to say uh, about 51% uh, attack is, yeah, that assumption, uh, the practical assumption was the attacker, uh, the, the more computing power means the, the more coins they already have. But actually, it, it only applies to, for example, Bitcoin or something like the kind of ma major coin. Yeah. So, and these days, you, you can also invest uh, in short, short position. So you can actually get some money uh, by um, the dropping the prices. So it may be more vulnerable than uh, we, we believed in the past. And yeah, this is uh, these are more uh, papers in uh, pure e pure yeah economics and actually very uh, pre uh, prestigious economist. So Sujan Ethe is also she also uh, has a paper with uh, her former student uh, about Bitcoin, and there are there are a bunch of papers. Most of the, them are currently is, is they uh, introduce. Uh, the field to fellow economists, and the uh, other things are they are trying to uh, explain the bubbles or uh, price formulation and then efficiency of the yeah, Bitcoin market and so on. But uh, as I mentioned, I I I think this year uh, the uh, after the Vitalik Buterin's talk in EC. Maybe the economists uh, will have much more interest in, in this field, and so we'll, we'll see much more papers in uh, ec traditional economics. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Time for a quick question. Anyone? I have a very quick question. Um, some people say crypto economics, some people say token economics. Is there a difference? Uh, I think the token e economics is a more, um, more broad or complicated term. Cri crypto economics is, uh, is just, uh, just something like, like this, as I explained, just about one coin. But token economy, I think, is it considered uh, how to how to re uh, uh, token economy uh, includes uh, more parties. Yeah. More parties. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So basically, how to uh, create it, the the entire system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's so it's it's so crypto economics is a subset of token economy. Uh, maybe maybe not. Maybe <laughs> not. I think it's a. Uh, to be honest, the. Yeah, those two are kind of buzzing words. So, yeah, I don't differentiate them too much. But yeah. Okay. So anyway, it's an interesting area to to further um, research and do it. Thank you, Sungwon, once again.